digital card games have many advantages over physical ones. One such advantage is the execution of complicated concepts and movement systems. Tactical, movement-based card games are one such idea that lends itself much better to a digital environment. And Feria is an excellent execution of this concept. Feria's earliest gameplay development dates back to 2005. It eventually began constant development in 2010 and made its way to Kickstarter at the end of 2013. The game pitched itself as a tactical experience, over the course of which you would create a unique landscape of battle, fight for territories, objectives, and eventually your opponent. Grid-based tactical card games was a novel concept at the time, but that wasn't the only new thing it brought to the table. Something else very different that the Belgian developer Abercam offered was the one-time buy-in model. With an upfront cost for access to the game, you would complete daily quests and objectives for a currency named Memoria that could be redeemed for packs of cards. Microtransactions were still present but restricted to cosmetic features, such as avatar and account plaques. Its Kickstarter funding was a success. Feria managed to collect a little over $94,000, exceeding its 70,000 goal. Following a two-year period of closed beta testing, the game underwent some drastic shifts to gameplay, which the developer cited was in response to the breakout success of Hearthstone. However, alongside these changes, Feria, now streamlined, announced a switch from its previous economy model to include free-to-play components. The same core of the game pitched before was still purchasable for a one-time cost, but players who did not wish to pay could play the game still, although with diminished currency gains. Feria then entered Steam Early Access in 2016. Overall, the game was praised by critics for its art direction, enjoyable gameplay, and fair economy model. The game finally had its official release in March of 2017. A full year later after its release, Abercam announced that in March of 2018, Feria would be returning to a buy-to-play model. This switchback from free-to-play to pay-to-play pay pay was unprecedented. The developer claimed that they were unhappy with their current implementation of free-to-play. However, those reading between the lines would infer that the previous free-to-play model was being too generous to players, and the small developer was not making enough in return to continue development. The new, or more accurately old, core of the game was priced at $25, and those who had an account during the free-to-play version would be granted this priced edition for free. Looking at the gameplay, the parallels between Magic the Gathering and Feria are obvious. From land being your main resource to the way the game stats creatures attack and toughness, the developers themselves have stated that they yearn to create an experience that would be just as enjoyable to players as Magic was to them. Cards in Feria are separated into four colors with an additional neutral color. The titular Feria is the main resource, or mana, of the game. You gain three a turn in a never-resetting pool, and almost all spells and creatures cost some amount to be cast. However, some cards also have land requirements as well. During a turn, a player can play as many cards as they have the required Feria for, move and attack with their creatures, and take one action from the Power Wheel. The Power Wheel is the core of the decision-making in Feria. Once a turn, you have the option between drawing a card, gaining a Feria, or placing a land tile on the board. When placing a land tile, you have the option between two neutral tiles, also known as prairies, or a land tile of one of the four colors of the game, being mountain, forest, desert, or lake. Land tiles of a specific color can enable you to cast certain creatures or spells. These land tiles have to be under your control, and the creatures with this requirement have to be placed on the colored tiles themselves. The way the lands work is the main way that Feria separates itself from other similar card games. As you and your opponent are fighting for territory, the battlefield will evolve differently every game you play. Many keywords on creatures toy with movement, allowing you to sometimes hop over gaps or even fly, circumventing the land entirely. So your options can still remain open if you are being cut off. This is why it is important what you choose each turn from the power wheel. Do you generate two neutral lands to advance your territory, or do you add a colored land to cast a creature next turn? Should you draw a card to gain more options, or will that put you behind too much? Every turn you will have to make a decision, and you will often be left second-guessing yourself wondering if a choice you made cost you your advantage. Located around the edge of the game board are wells of Feria that can be controlled by being adjacent to. At the beginning of a turn, if one of your units is next to a well, you will gain an additional Feria. However, if your opponent is next to the well, they will also gain the bonus, so it is advantageous to fight for this objective. This adds more benefit to spreading out instead of just tunneling your opponent. The gameplay of Feria is tight and tactical. Unit positioning and land expansion creates a layer of depth that can force you to plan very far ahead. Creatures fill multiple roles and can be used to develop a defense, push an attack, or simply hold a well to provide some reinforcement. Beyond the gameplay, the experience surrounding it is also excellent. Feria's draft mode, Pandora, has you draft a deck with the inclusion of some overpowered cards that cannot be accessed in any non-Pandora modes. These provide a nice boost to gameplay and skirts around the problem draft usually has wherein you are forced to play with a subpar deck. 
Board puzzles are an underappreciated game mode that lend themselves particularly well to this tactical game format. Faria has a breadth of options for people looking to challenge themselves with the various single player modes, from sets of puzzles to a fully fledged adventure mode with bosses and daily challenges, all of which come with pack and cosmetic rewards for completion. Speaking of rewards, the most interesting and unique aspect of Faria is its economy system. All gameplay modes from PvP to Pandora to puzzles provide a currency, in addition to other rewards, called shards that can redeem the game's version of booster packs and most cosmetics. A secondary premium currency called gems can be purchased to also acquire card chests and then more unique cosmetics. The card chests themselves are separated into two categories. The first, regular chest, is unavailable for purchase with either currency and can only be received through gameplay or leveling rewards. This one contains a standard distribution of cards that you do not own based on rarity. The more exclusive version, the Mythic Chest, can sometimes be given as a prestigious reward, but is the only one of the two that can actually be purchased with both of the game's currencies. A Mythic Chest contains the same distribution as a normal chest, but all of the cards are their premium Mythic versions. Identical in gameplay, but prettier. The kicker is, there's only one card chest and its Mythic version. The two expansions that you can currently purchase for the modest asking price of $14 do not grant you cards but rather add the new cards to the pool that you can open through chests. This is in addition to a handful of chests and some cosmetics that you get upon purchase of the expansion. Occasionally, you will be offered chests that are expansion specific, but these are only obtainable as a bonus for the purchase. Crafting exists in the game, but it's very different from what we're used to. Every six hours, you gain a crafting charge to a maximum of six, and then you can spend this crafting charge on any non-legendary card that you do not own. To summarize this system, gameplay is the primary method of acquiring cards. You can, if you so wish, purchase mythic chests to speed up this process, but at the rate the game grants level rewards and daily quests, you won't ever feel like you need to. The other two pieces of DLC that are available to purchase is a premium pack that doubles the XP gain from play alongside a wealth of goodies, and a puzzle pack with additional rewards for completion. You can pay a lump sum of $40 for the entire package, which, compared to the amount you have to spend in other card games to be competitive, is nothing. Gameplay and economy aside, you don't need me to tell you that this is a gorgeous looking game. As you can see, everything in the client holds a cohesive, whimsical art style that is detail rich and pleasant to look at. The soundtrack combines a soft nature ambience with gentle tribal instrumentals to evoke the feeling of mystique and fantasy. The art style on the cards is consistent across the board and has a nice soft look that meshes in with the client. Even though it went through many iterations on its economy over the years, the core gameplay of Faria has remained the same. While looking simple on the outside, there is a range of depth to the territory control systems therein. The community is small but very tightly knit and dedicated. For a game that is praised for having one of the most honest monetization systems in card games, it's certainly worth the price of admission for even the single player components alone. If you are looking for a fresh tactical experience that somehow ends up feeling familiar at a modest cost, then you should give Faria a try. There are many great card games out there, and many fly under the radar for one reason or the other. If there is a lesser known card game that you would like us to cover, then let us know. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.